Hello! In this session, we are going to look at how to load a STL file and simulate an X ray projection from it using the, simu uh, the library. So, first, well, let's see if it's installed properly. So, I'm going to run this command. So, Using the Python interpreter, we're going to load the package and see if it's there. Right, so here you can see that the package hasn't been found. So we're going to check the environment variable, Python path. And if you look carefully, we cannot find where the package is. And I got it somewhere in my home directory here. Uh, that's the path that we will want to add to Python path. So export Python path equal to this directory. So we add it to the path. Try again this command, and you can see that has worked, and the major version of simple GVXR is 1. So now we can try to uh, simulate some X ray images. The first thing we need is to go to a directory where we can work. So let's say uh, mkd test um, Python. Right, we need to download a STL file, so you have one just there. It's going to take a bit of time. Right, it's downloaded and it's here. And you can uh, visualize what it is. Uh, there is a program that I like a lot. It's uh, called Mesh Lab. Here it is. So if we import the mesh, so that was in running. I did it in the branch. So here's the mesh. And something did not go well. Right, let's try another one. We're supposed to have one there. And you can see that has worked in that case. And you can see this is a very nice dragon. Um, what I'm really looking for is if the normal vectors are oriented outwards. If it wasn't the case, it'd be all black, so um, that's all good. We can close that now. Right, so we can launch a Python interpreter. Or we could write a script, so write all the commands in a text editor. Uh, it does not really matter, so import. Uh, I'm going to import matplotlib as well. And I'm going to make sure that the backend is 
uh, a good one. And say, well, you need to be able to plot things. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to create an OpenGL context and give it a size. So GL, create window and the window size is 512 by 512 and here you can see the uh, OpenGL backend. So we're using a GeForce RTX. There we go. So we now need to set the um, simulation parameters. So where is the X-ray source? Where is the detector? Uh, how big is the detector uh, in terms of pixels? What is the space between two consecutive pixels? And um, the orientation of the detector. What kind of source we need in terms of um, energy? Monochromatic, polychromatic, what kind of energy, etc. etc. So let's create the source. So it's set source position. Uh, you can choose the unit. So here is minus 40, 0, 0, and it's in centimeters. And we're going to use a point source. It could be a parallel source. Um, 80 cave and we got a thousand photons of 80 cave. Now where is the detector? So this is basically the same as to, as how we set the source position. So here is again along the x-axis, so 10 centimeters. Then the orientation, so the up vector. How many pixels do we want? So here, um, 640 by 320. And the space between two consecutive pixels. So 0 0.5 millimeter along the two axes. And now everything is ready to simulate an X-ray image. So we need to load uh, the file. So here, where is the file? I said we're going to use the one over there um, where is it we should have one somewhere here in data and again you need to specify which unit uh, to use so here it's in millimeter it's going to be take a bit of time while it's loading now we need to set um, the properties of the mesh. So density, attenuation coefficient, uh, whatever. Um, so there are various ways to do that. Um, so, well, we could look at how many meshes we got in the scene graph, so in that file. Uh, it should be one because this is from a STL file. But if it was something, it might be a little bit more. So as you could see, there is only one mesh in that scene graph. Uh, so we're going to retrieve that mesh. So we need to know its name. So its index is zero because there's only one. So uh, you can see what is the label. And this is STL binary, which is what we had here. So this is actually the label of that mesh. Uh, we could move it to the center. So the object will be centered on 0, 0, 0. And here I'm going to specify the properties of that mesh in Unsville unit, which is something used in medicine. Uh, later on, we'll use a different uh, mode when we simulate tomography. Right, so we got a source, we got a detector, we got an object. So we're ready to compute an X-ray image. So just compute X-ray image and save it in here. 
Uh, so that should be a NumPy array, I believe. We can check that. Uh, right, that's a tuple. So we may want to convert it into a NumPy array. Ah, I forgot to import NumPy. So let's try again. Right, so now this is a NumPy array. We can check its uh, shape. 320 by 640, which is the size of our detector number of pixels. Because as NumPy, you can see that this is inverted. Y, X, X, Y. I like to keep it in the alphabetical order, or like we do in map. We can save the extra image. Just say save last extra image, and it's saved. Uh, if we look in the folder, we should now have an extra image. We can open it with VG, which is just image J. It's not installed. Yes, it is installed, I believe. Uh, Maybe it's not installed. Right, so I'll install it uh, because I really like it. So I'll start Firefox and I'm going to look for Fiji and I'm going to install it. So that's from here using Linux, downloading. Hopefully it's not going to take too long. I'll pause while it's downloading. Actually, I have a better idea. We're going to save the image again, but in a different format. So I should have time.mhd now in my folder. Uh, no, wrong one. It is right, so we could look at the header. So, this is in float, the image size, and so forth. So, we can start image J because I know that this is installed, and we just import the raw data. I mean, maybe even simpler, we could just do a ASCII file. And we see here if I do head temp txt, we have the ASCII file. So uh, you can either use the text file, it's a bit bigger, or the raw file. Uh, either way, it's fine. Um, so we were working on programming branches, test Python. So here, the raw file. So 640 by 320. This is in Ford. A uh, little Indian because I'm using Intel processor. And here's my X ray image. And in the white area, it should be 80k. And you can see here that the average pixel value in that rectangle is. It's computing. Not sure why it's so slow. Not sure why it's so slow. Eighty mean eighty max eighty. So this is just eighty. So the unit here is in K. We can shut that now. Let's go back to here. Well, we've done our X-ray simulation. You could see that you can do X-ray simulation with about, well, uh, one line, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
14 lines of code and you got your x-ray simulation and 15 if you want to save the image uh, not bad uh, if you want to see the uh, environment this is possible as well uh, so there is a command so we can see the 3d scene and uh, with this command you can only see it uh, no interaction so if you want some interaction there is another one you need an event loop so run the loop and hit it so you can use a scroll a button on the mouse uh, and you can uh, move around b to eye the beam b to show it again if you zoom in you could look at the mesh as well uh, w to use wireframe uh, if you want to work in negative, press N and you got the negative of the image and press Q to quit. And you can then exit. Now we got our X-ray simulation uh, done. I will provide a Python script with all these commands uh, and with comments uh, in the script so that you can just download it and try it. Um, oh yeah, what I forgot, we could display these images using Matplotlib, obviously. Right, this is that done, so X-ray simulation using a single STL file. Now we're going to look at importing an Abacus file, an INP file, in the next video.